we're playing right now as we head into Champion Select. It will be these guys swapping up. Ah, that's not Champion Select. That's, that's, a, that's bracket. a bracket. That's okay, so Unicorns of Love, the only team not to have dropped a game in the group stages until now. That was the first loss of the tournament yeah. against a Reason Gaming. And Gamers 2, before you were talking about the match of the Titans on the other side of the bracket. And Gamers 2 actually won the last uh, Face of Challenge Invitational. Yeah, they did. And, you know, we, we talked about it. Fa uh, Gamers 2 kind of go quiet for a little while and then pop yeah. up and win something and then go quiet again. And it, It's not that they perform badly in other tournaments. It's just that they pick and choose the tournaments that they enter, specifically offline events as well. They, they tend to clean up a lot of the uh, smaller European uh, events that are very close to the, the Gamers 2 house. But, Gamers 2 are playing later. This is reason in Unicorns of Love, and Unicorns of Love are going to ban out Braum. They will, and they'll follow that up with the Syndra ban from Reason Gaming, which, of course, you had to ban out first because yeah. it's Power of Evil. Ooh. So that's just a given. Lee Sin banned by Reason. Okay, interesting. Because we were like, okay, Unicorns of Love, they have to ban out Lee Sin. But that was banned out by Reason. Now I wonder, are they going to ban or steal away Morgana here as yeah. the first pick. That could be a point of contention. Uh, now with Gragas banned, probably one of these two bands is going to be Cassidin. And maybe, mm. I was going to say maybe Aurelia as well, but that's now cheating because it's already Cause it's on the screen. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Cassidin will be the last ban. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There we go. From Gragas, Cassidin. <laughs> Got it. Wasn't yeah, anticipating the least in ban. From yeah. reason though, but that just Ooh, made it easier Lucian. for unicorns of love to be like, okay, we'll ban out these champions. Mm. But Lucian was banned out last game, yeah, and now it's been let through. So reason that's why they banned out Lucian. They wanted uh, the Lucian to be available. They weren't trying to choke the jungle. They were like, okay, well, we'll give you an extra ban. You've forgotten about Lucian. Oh, guess we'll take that. Uh, we actually saw Caston play in the LCS very recently, where uh, the teams basically were like, oh, we forgot. And uh, yeah. and then casting was played. And it was yeah, I, I mean, in this situation, I don't know whether it was that they, you know, were just relying on them for getting. I think it was more that obviously Lee Sin would have been the the pick to yeah. go around. So they do uh, they do make sure that Dan doesn't get his hands on Lee Sin. Then yeah, Lucian, I kind of overlooked him as well because I keep thinking that oh, Lucian's a strong. Oh, yeah. they changed him. They tried to make him weaker. Oh, actually, they made him incredibly strong, even stronger than before. So uh, sometimes that slips in my mind. Yeah, and Lucian, of course, is currently disabled in the LCS. So yes. this is uh, kind of a, a, a chance and challenge to see how he performs before we see it in the upper echelons of play. But next two pickups from Unicorns of Love was the Shivana, followed by Tristana. So taking it away from Reason this time. There's an interest could happen here. It's happened once or twice, specifically Ninjas in Pajamas have played it. Uh, if they picked, for instance, a Caitlyn and played Lucian mid with uh, an AP jungler or top lane that is going to have good kind of mixed damage around the team, uh, you can play a very fast turret pushing composition. So that may not be Lucian AD carry. Yeah. And now that Tristana is picked, Tristana is kind of picked as um, almost situational. She's, she's very strong, but against a lane like a Caitlyn, it will punish her very, very strongly. So... Ooh, this it still could be on the cards. Yeah, we haven't seen all of their cards being played just yet. That's the Lulu. So again, that could be mid lane, it could be support. Uh, we've seen it in both roles actually recently. So again, it's ambiguous so far. Rengar, most likely in the jungle. We have seen a bit of Rengar play uh, by a yep. couple of players now. And we'll see how that works out for them. I mean, Lulu possibly could be top. Haven't seen it all that much recently. Did get a couple of little adjustments, but it could still be top lane. Yeah. Which, you know, would set that up. You've got AP top lane. Also, the fact that Rengar is very good at catching would allow Lucian to kind of combo with that in the middle lane. Uh, the other option is Cogmore from Caitlyn. So you've yeah. got that very fast tower push. I'm kind of banking, on, well, assuming they're going to do that. The other option is they just pick something like a Ziggs in the middle lane. Uh, something that's very good uh, just all around. Yeah. Okay. What are they going to go with here? So Unicorns of Love, they're sitting on Vine, they're sitting on Fresh, both of which will be locked in. So Fresh will be in the support role, most likely. I don't think we've ever seen Fresh in a different role. Mm, Vi, well, uh, well, depends, uh, depends uh, what, what you've watched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, Vi as well will be picked up. So Ooh. most likely going to be in the jungle. There we go, Morgana. I so now this will start illuminating some of our questions. Yeah, I kind of overlooked Morgana. And when you 
when you kind of look at this, maybe, I mean, if they're waiting for a mid laner, it would be a very AP heavy composition. If they're getting a top laner, uh, what's available right now? They could pick Jax to go against Shivana. Didn't do too well in the last game. Okay, so if that goes through, then it is indeed uh, going to be Lucian in the AD carry role. Haven't seen too much Lucian mid, but it it is a possibility that yep. you kind of have to watch out for. Oriana would make a lot of sense, just consistent. And then we'll probably see a Ziggs lock in from Unicorns of Love, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I don't think that's too far from uh, from the truth. So, Oriana, Morgana locked in as well. Uh, that will be a Lulu top then in that case. Mm. We're going to be seeing yep. their hair up there. Again, have seen that from a couple of people. So has in the LCS has uh, picked up a Lulu top. And Unicorns of Love, what will be their last pick? So we're looking towards a mid laner. Oh, that would be a shocker if we saw that one. Or Zareth. It's going to be Zareth, one of the yeah. two, I feel. Um, looking at other options that are available, probably just want something consistent. So it's likely to be yep. Ziggs or Zareth. And this is where they change to like a ribbon. <laughs> something just yeah, completely something, ridiculous. Something crazy. Yeah, just yeah. go balls to the wall. Well, they are one game down. If they lose this one, then they're completely out of the tournament. So if this is uh, if there's any time to try something a little bit funky, then yeah. now is the time to do it from Unicorns of Love. Seen a couple of champions being played that are kind of like a little bit different. Seen Lux a little bit, but not yeah. expecting it. Ooh, that's a placeholder. Yeah, it would be. That's a placeholder. Yeah, that's got to be a placeholder. There's no way. Uh, maybe that's why there was a delay there on the go. Ziggs okay. as well. It's just like, uh, do you actually own Ziggs? <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. So, uh, yeah, that was a placeholder. If you're unfamiliar with the concept, you basically pick a champion, which basically is never played. Uh, and then it was just like, that's a weird... Oh, okay, it's a placeholder. So yeah. it basically just signs to the other team. They'll message them on the client and just say, uh, this is in place of another champion because we are on live. Not everyone will have every single champion. Uh, and then they'll just go into champion select once again and cycle which through the picks. leads me to believe it may be Zareth. Because yeah, Zareth actually, is a champion yeah. that I doubt Hyla Sang is going to have. This is like me trying to strategize yeah. what champion <laughs> that a support what, has gone what through. What wouldn't they own? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's actually very true. Uh, I'm trying to think Zareth. of like mid laners you'd pick against Ziggs that you probably wouldn't have on a support, even if you've played a lot of the yeah. game. Because I didn't have Zareth for a very long time. And was like, uh, the I'll he's, buy he's him He's not later. good right now. I'll, I'll, I'll buy, him buy him when he's reworked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll buy yeah. him later. Um, uh, well, we'll find out. I, I have a feeling it's probably going to be Zareth. Uh, ooh, oh no, it wouldn't be Zillion because support would have Zillion from that time when yeah, everyone was yeah, playing Zillion yeah. support. Okay, yeah. it could be Zareth. Uh, we truth. have seen a lot of Zareth. Oh, wow. Ooh, okay. Cassiopeia, that, hello. That makes so, curveball pick. We found it. <laughs> okay. We've got it, guys. Where's Wally? Or oh, where's Cassiopeia? It's right there. Power <laughs> of evil. He's, he's got the Cassiopeia. Okay, so we have seen this once before yeah. from them, and they won with it against Ninjas and Pajamas. So if there's any test or trial by fire, it's going to be against Ninjas and Pajamas. Okay, so let me explain Cassiopeia to, to people that are like, why don't we see Cassiopeia in, in yeah. pro play? She's yeah. incredibly strong. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, you have to be very good with her is the first one. You <laughs> can't just be like, oh, I'll just pick Cassiopeia. It's fine. Yeah. Because obviously the E reset, uh, the Twin Fang, does not reset unless you hit a champion that has been hit by a poison. And that is incredibly difficult to do on a single target in a team fight situation. It's fairly difficult to do in lane as well because of the radius of the poison. But trying to do it with pinpoint precision in a team fight is incredibly difficult. Uh, to the point where I believe I was having a conversation with this with uh, Skara. It's like you have to QEE -E every two seconds in perfect positioning yeah. to get Cassiopeia's full damage off. And that is incredibly difficult. It's very difficult mechanically and kind of mentally. Very draining champion to play. Incredibly strong, however. Do not underestimate a Cassiopeia. Just the petrifying gaze can at some points take 40% of your health if you're not expecting it. And from there, Cassiopeia, if that Q lands, if the E lands and you get the reset, you just continuously chunk down your target and can do so much damage. But Cassiopeia, without kills, without items, will start to fall off. That's one of the problems with Cassiopeia. She's a very heavy snowballing champion. Yeah, and in contrast to a lot of mid laners, it's sustained damage, right? Like yeah. it's Q, it's the twin fang, it's the twin fang constantly. And she's fairly short range compared yep. to like a lot of mid laners we're seeing at the moment. The Orianas, the Ziggs, who will be really far away. Even the Zareth, we actually mentioned it could be the Zareth. 
Um, she's very short range, so getting into range, uh, she will actually get extra movement speed from her Q, which is like something she can use to maneuver around team fights, maneuver in the laning phase, and also use to check brushes. If you have yep. the buff on yourself, and you're like, oh, I have the buff, therefore I've hit something in the bush. That's actually a cool little uh, little thing that you can do with her Q. But it's not a pick we see very often. Um, but if it works out, then that's a lot of damage to bring to a team fight. I attribute Cassiopeia a little bit like um, how Syndra used to be. Yeah. Nobody played Syndra because the mechanics of Syndra were a little bit tricky, a little bit uh, difficult to actually get to work for yourself. If you didn't have a lot of games on Syndra, and we saw Power of Evil play Cassiopeia the other day in the Black Monster Cup against Alex each of all people, and did very well. So... Yeah. You know, we saw Power of Evil get a kill on to take fun with a Ziggs in the very early game. That probably isn't going to... Well, I mean, if, if Power of Evil hits level 2 and can Q Twin Fang twice, Ignite, and get auto attacks after some early harass, could very well be another kill for Power of Evil. So I wonder how much take fun has played against Cassiopeia. Because if you haven't played against it too much, <laughs> yeah. in the same vein, you step on that poison and uh-oh... This is not oh, a good I'm taking situation. a lot of damage here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's again, it's uh, the weird factor, you know, mm. coming in. It's just like most mid laners wouldn't have had practice against a yep. Cassiopeia. When are you going to see that? It's like you can't just ask your friend, oh, hey, can you play Cassiopeia against me? And yeah. just like see how this works. That just doesn't happen. And that's the other thing is you, you have to read the situation incredibly quickly because petrifying gaze, you must turn from it. Otherwise, you give them a free setup for two rounds of the full damage from Cassiopeia, yeah. which is an incredible amount of damage. So if you don't turn from that and make it a slow instead of a stun, you are in deep, deep trouble. Yeah, an AoE, two-second stun. Uh, it's quite strong. But yeah. what does that mean for their composition? Because we're focused a lot on Cassiopeia, but we haven't looked at the broader picture on, on the mm. uh, compositions themselves. So we've got the Cassiopeia in the mid lane. On the opposing side, we've got the Oriana, we've got the uh, the Lulu in the top lane. So there's a lot of protection already for the Lucian, who's in the bot lane, and the Rengar, who's in the jungle. We haven't even touched on the Rengar. Yeah, uh, Rengar typically has been run with cooldown reduction, and I'm actually super excited about this game now because <laughs> yeah. there is so, so much to talk about. So Rengar typically is building a fair amount of cooldown reduction. It lets you throw out the bolus very early. It fits uh, a lot of these aggressive jungle playstyles where you want to completely assassinate somebody before they even get a chance to move. So, I mean, you look at that kind of composition, Rengar goes in, gets the first bolus, gets the stun, damage from the team, gets another bolus, and is able to, to kind of carry on from there. But we are on to the rift. And we are into game. So it will be Reason Gaming one up in this best of three series against Unicorns of Love, who were swapped up to the upper right hand side of the map. And that was the very first loss coming into this tournament. Reason Gaming are making sure it will be the second and last loss of the tournament for Unicorns of Love. And they will take this to a 2 and 0 sweep. So everyone is moving into the jungle. And we'll see what they can do in the early game. We've got the Morgana, so they do have potential to get a pick in the jungle. Hive Sign as well has the fresh, so they do have a hook if they want to do something about that. Or they have a flay as well if they want to knock back multiple members. There's a lot of potential in the early game in the first couple levels, uh, or in the first, very first level, <laughs> the level one, to get a pick. Yes, indeed. You can see just early wards come out from both teams just to uh, secure their jungle. And, uh, I want to keep the camera fixed on mid lane so badly <laughs> for <laughs> this game. Does zoom in on the Cassiopeia. It is so rare that we see a Cassiopeia. And Power of Evil, again, is one of those mid lane players who, to be honest, I would not want to play against if I'm a challenger mid lane. Well, because yeah. you never know what he's going to do. You never know when he's going to all in you. And he typically he ends a laning phase with a good kill or two. Especially because he's played this against Ali Zich, of all people, mm. the ex-LCS player, um, until very recently, and won with it. So, Take Fun right now is probably trembling in his boots. If they are boots, I'm not really sure what Oriana wears. But, Makler in the bot lane with Libic. So, Lucian. This is the remade Lucian. 500 range from auto attacks. 500 range on, in fact, most of his abilities. His Q is now on 500 range. So, he's a lot shorter in that respect. Oh, a nice dark binding to start off the laning phase. 
gets the piercing light as well. But the biggest change, well, the biggest change is currently to Maka's health bar, which gets taken down to 50%. But the other big change of Lucian is his uh, E reset very quickly. The double tap, uh, if used on the champion, will reduce it by four seconds. Yeah, and that really just will show its uh, strength in the team fights. You can see Tavefun. Tavefun's actually taken shield first. That tells you a lot about this lane. That tells you so, so much about how much damage Paravival has now. Importantly, Paravival hit two seconds, so he didn't get that initial engage. But you can see how cautious Take Fun is here. Yeah, that was free to use in the row landing on Take Fun, and he's already had to burn through one health potion. That command protect was able to mitigate some of that damage. Mackler did sidestep Hyla Sang's first death sentence, but it's plenty more where those came from. And okay, Mackler is just farming out, but. Large advances so far by Vardax, 12 CS to 8, but he should be able to even that up. But they are definitely getting the better of that lane. In fact, that's what we saw last game as well. Yeah, I think it's just that early initial trade where Magla got played back and took a fair amount of damage. Just kind of resulted pretty well here. Dan is looking to get into the lane, but I think Zayu actually spotted him out here. Well, Zayu jumps onto Dan, will be hitting up with the bowler as well. Both of these guys will double up, take fun, will be able to get the command protect to him. So just have those extra stats, trying to get a range. Dan charging up the Vault Breaker, will be jumping back onto him. Zayu just mops him up. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, we see the first blood go down. Vardax is still alive, trying to trade off against Libic, but taking so much damage from the minions in return, Libic will actually aggress towards him, still getting hit up by those caster minions. Now Zayu heading into the bot lane. Power of Evil was in hot pursuit, lands the first door to attack. Will he go for the flash? Vardax is there, but on critical HP, he goes for the tower dive. He lands the first E and will pick up the kill on one for one. Vardax will go toe to toe with Libic once again who has now picked up the double buffs, will be rocket jumping away and teleporting across the screen. So lots of action into this game, free and free. So equal at the very start. So mid lane has died, jungle has died, and one member from each bottom lane died Correct. in that engage. So overall, you'd think the trade is kind of even, but look at where the gold went for the Unicorns of Love. Two kills onto Cassiopeia. She's got extra cooldown now, uh, extra mana regen as well. So it, it's such a good position for her to be in, in that lane. It's going to be able to, once she gets back, start dominating even more. But there is a kill onto Rengar. That is pretty important here for Zayu. In comes Dan into the lane. Oh, Dan charging up the Vault Breaker. Hyla Sang is also removed from the bottom lane. Gets the death sentence and the play. Locks in place. Not going anywhere, and Power of Evil, well, he doesn't even need to think about trying to land those skill shots when they're just not moving. A superb roam out from Hyla Sang. That's what we've seen out of the better Thresh players, uh, not only in Europe, but just around the world, is that well-timed early game roam. Uh, you get out of lane when you know you've got a spare second to do it and make your presence felt in mid lane. With Dan there as well, it was an easy kill to convert. And Power of Evil is now three and one on Cassiopeia. And I mentioned it, she's a snowballing champion. And that is exactly what she's set up to do. Unicorns of Love need to pull something out of the bag. And it seems like they're doing it for and free, that they do have the advantage in this game. The gold is still very equal, but the gold has been centered on the Cassio here in the mid lane. Libic landing a great dark binding, but oh. oh, death sentence onto Libic, goes through the minions right onto him. There's the double of Vardax, jumps forward, flashes away, Makla is wailing away on the Tristana, jumps forward, and should be able to pick up the kill, gets that one, takes him down from the turret, will be hitting up the minion, Hyla Sang heads back to the turret and himself, piercing light, and they just overextended mid lane though, take fun, comes <laughs> in, full break into the back of the head, Power of Evil survives. 3-1-1. One one. Oh man, it's going so well in the mid lane right after a blunder down in the bottom side of the map. Not sure why Vardax went in there. He should have just been content, but you can see the prize he was looking for, the double buffs that are circling around Libic. That's what he was after in that engage. Couldn't get them got punished for it. And Vardax, you've got to be careful here because last game you were overstepping and dying and you've set yourself up this game to do the same. Yeah, it uh, was a very aggressive manoeuvre. A lane that we haven't looked at very often, or at all this game, is the top lane. Flaxish versus Jokies. Very equal CS, so while Shivana has been farming from range, no doubt put a couple points into his flame breath just to try and get those extra CS down. But 4 and 5, he hasn't had to really do anything. He just needs to farm and survive the lane. Yeah, this is just one of these top lane matchups that not a lot is going to happen. Uh, even though we've just reached level 6, both of these top laners have pretty defensive ultimate abilities. 
you can see the gap widening in mid lane now. 30 CS to 45 in favor of Power of Evil. And when was the last time you saw an Orianna having trouble farming? And until very recently, Take Fun has only just turned level 5. T uh, Power of Evil was two solid levels ahead. The Flay does not land onto Levick in the bot lane, but Power of Evil has his ultimate, Take Fun does not. Petrifying Gage, you're oh, facing the wrong direction, and he may pick up a double kill. Oh. oh, he completely whiffs it! And now we'll take the Piercing Lightning return. That was that was not going to plan. Yeah, uh, Power of Evil just a little bit misreading the range there. That's one of the problems with Cassiopeia, is her ultimate is not a very long range at all. And it looks like Reason are going to take this opportunity to now push down a little bit of damage on that middle tower. They can't really get in too much, but... That was a bit of a misread by Power of Evil. I don't think he'll make that mistake again, though. Yeah, uh, that would have worked if he wasn't bound and he carried yeah. on walking forwards. Um, but yeah, I was going to say maybe he was like looking at his screens too far down, but it's all in the same area. So I think it's one of those 50-50 ones where he's thinking, I've roamed down, my ultimate hasn't got the largest cooldown. Yeah. I'm going to throw it out just in case it gets the slow. And if it gets the slow, hopefully Hyla Sang can follow up. Yeah, that's probably his mindset heading into that one. But level six on both of the bot lanes, Makra and Libic will have that advantage over Vardags and Hyla Sang. But Power of Evil gets detonated in the mid lane by Zayu. There's a flash forward take from with the last auto attack. Will finish off that kill. But Dan now comes in, lands one auto attack. There's excessive force as well. Follows up the assault and battery. Looking for the last auto attack. He is ticking down from the red buff. Does he have enough? One more tick. No, he does not. Zayu gets the command protect. And Dan does not get anything. I'm kind of glad to see that, though. Dan has kind of matured a little bit as a player because I feel like Dan would have gone in on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, that's one of the problems Dan has sometimes is he's over-aggressive. Luckily for him, he knew that if he goes in there, Rengar will kill him. So good read on the game. He got summoners, he got damage, forces Orianna out of lane, forces her not to farm anymore. So... Man, that's an Aether Wisp picked up on Ooh, to, uh, to Cassiopeia. I'm trying to think, is that... What's that going towards? I can never remember what it builds into. I know it builds into Lich Bane. He's got the Fiend's Codex as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm Off the top of my head, I can never remember what that yep. item builds into. Lich Bane. Okay, well, we'll <laughs> wait for a couple <laughs> of minutes, he'll build it, and then we'll call it out and we'll sound smart. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'll be like, oh, it was this all along. Yeah, Blacksesh in the top lane again. 81 farm to 79, so he's slightly ahead, but that large minion wave coming in, Sajoki's, he will very easily open or close that, uh, close that gap. So Power of Evil keeping his passive up to five stacks will reduce the mana cost of his abilities, will allow him just to Q, Q, and Q for days, and he's got the blue buff, so honestly no reason not to be spamming on his Q. Yeah, indeed. That's one of the other things that a lot of people overlook about Cassiopeia, and... Ooh, another roam coming out. I wonder if Petrifying Gaze is available. And Jokies is. is pretty oh, weak. There's the ward, lands the Q. We'll get the extra movement speed for Axis. Follows up with the Dragon's Descent. Lands another Q onto the back, but wasn't in range for the twin. Fine spot lane, however. Libic is ticking down from the Ignite. Vardax dropping low. Oh, the Death <laughs> Sentence does not land. The Culling did not block that for his ally. Was kept in place by that animation. Makla, can he go one better? Can he pick up the second kill? Looks like a no, but Tyler Sang does turn around and hit him in the face with his stacked up flay damage. So that was a 1 and 0 in the bottom lane. Mid lane, no. Power of Evil is flashing up red. The bowler hits his ally of Flaxis. There's a command attack. Picks up one. Flashes over the wall. Joke, he's not able to keep him in place. But Reason Gaming, two quick kills. And it will put them ahead in this game. They're starting to really get on top of uh, Unicorns of Love right now. Every time Vardags goes in in the bottom lane, Makla is just out trading him with Lucian. Again, they're just going to let the tower deny as much as it possibly can here. And Makla's slowing down his auto attacks just to let the minions aggro the turret. But there we go. Turret will fall in favor of Reason. And maybe that'll give Vardax a little bit of respite. Gives him that opportunity to solo farm just with it pushing in towards him so he can get himself into the game. And it's a bit of a... a, a horrifying thought to think that if he can get farm, they're still in this game. But Blade of the Rune King on Lucian right now, he's incredibly strong. Tristana doesn't... Wow, okay, has just spent her gold and has no opportunity of getting a BF sword anytime soon. So that Infinity Edge is a long, long way away. Dragon has gone in favor of Unicorns of Love, though. 
Oh, down in the mid lane, charging up the Vault Breaker. The flash into the Vault Breaker and the Sword and Battery, but everyone's closing in around him. The Shockwave will keep him in place. One for one so far. Lipic now chasing after. Lands the Soul Shackles, keeps Power of Evil standing. And Dio will jump into the bush, gets the leap, the Unseen Predator. And there's the Smite, two for one and goes to Reason Gaming again, coming out every single time ahead in these trades. Libic, every time he's got a kill, has got buffs off it as well. <laughs> so he's really making the most out of these kills. Now has a blue buff to his name, but uh, yeah, uh, Unicorns of Love picked up Dragon uh, just a little while ago, so that won't be available for Reason, but they are gonna try and power down this mid tower, which should end up falling. And again, they're going to deny the minions from Varlax comes to the rescue, but the tower is very low. Someone could just sneeze near it, and it will fall down. So, so far, Reason Gaming have not only stabilized, but come out and ahead in this early game. Two and zero on towers, three kills over their counterparts. More farm in the bottom lane, but still had to be careful of Power of Evil. Four, four, and one. I slowed down a little bit. Those constant deaths have uh, made an impact on his farm, but he is in pretty good shape. And he's picked up the Hextech Revolver as well. That was exactly what I was about <laughs> to say. That is not an item you see very often at all. Yeah. There is not a lot that builds out of it. You've got two options. You've got a uh, Hextech Gunblade, which is probably not the thing that no. he's going to pick up. And a Will of the Ancients, which has been an incredibly long time since I've seen one of those in competitive play. It got heavily nerfed, actually. It used to be a fair amount better. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's no longer an aura. It's just for a single per... Oh, wait, no, it's still an aura. But I was going to say, I, th I think it's still an aura, but it's way worse than yeah. it used to be. It used, it used to, to be, be amazing. Really good. Yeah, it used to be able to have those on two people. Back when we saw the double AP compositions, mm. you would have two Will of the Ancients, and uh, you just had so much health coming back, especially when we had like the Burn Mages, yeah. which actually what Power of E was playing right now was a Burn Mage. So we can see why it's strong. Zayu, hello. Oh, jumping onto Power of Evil detonates him. We'll be taking him out. There's the the, uh, the ultimate coming through, but he didn't land on to take fun. And he will be taken out top lane. However, Dan was able to get one kill in return. So a one for one over the map. But the middle turret dropping. That's all of the outer turrets falling down now for Reason Gaming. Now, Mackler is going to push on towards the inner one as well. So the turrets are just hemorrhaging now in favor of Reason Gaming. And to be honest, I don't know how this composition is going to get back in. They need a couple of picks from Power of Evil. It started so well, but he's got picked up a good few times. Yeah, and that's another turret falling. So they're just picking up their pace. Flaxis, how did you kill Oriana? Another kill went down. Looked like in it the was with lane. Dan's help. So, uh, yeah, let's analyze the crime scene. Forensics. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Blood splatter on the wall. And determine he came in from this angle. But they were able to pick him up in the uh, in the skirmish that Would happened bot lane with that distraction. <laughs> this is a horrible conversation oh, yeah. from Ariana. Good point. Motor uh, oil. I don't know, man. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure what color that would be. Maybe it would be red to imitate that. I don't know. Palestine and Flaxish in the mid lane trying to get a tower in return, but Jokies is like, nope. Clears out the minions or hit him with a couple auto attacks. Power of Evil trying to farm with the Drongle as well. 100 to 100 farm in the mid lane. Fairly even, but objective after objective. And this is exactly what we saw last game. Reason Gaming continuously on top of the objectives. This time more in uh, favor of the turrets than we actually seen out of like Dragon the Baron, but no doubt they'll pick up the pace on that one as well. Unicorns of Love, in fact, picked up the first dragon. But Unicorns of Love, no towers currently. And we saw it at around, what, 30 minutes? It came back to bite them. Mm. There's no reason why that wouldn't happen again in this one. Yeah, it's a, a very possible outcome here. I mean, this is kind of has been a game told solely in the mid lane, and all from mid lane is dying as well. It's uh, not a good position for the mid laners to be in, because although they've got kills under their belt, so many deaths has just fed gold to the other team, and it means that there's a couple of items now. You can see how far Dan is into his build, has the cooldown reduction, has a brutalizer as well, so he's well on the way to having that massive amount of damage. Sorry, Zion. I'm just so used to Dan playing yeah. Renka that it feels a little bit weird to see somebody else playing. Well, we also have Vardag sporting a Tristan in this game, which Maka was playing last time. So, trading champions back and forth. Halasang will take some damage from that Miasma. No, he won't because he's on this team. Miasma will be clearing out the minions in the mid lane. 
That's another thing that she does very well. Wave clears like a beast. Flaxis in the top lane will get his first tower. Not only for himself, but for the team. Libic in the mid lane. Ooh, Dark Binding goes right up to the nose of Power of Evil. Flash forward from Hyla Sang does not land the death sentence. Dan's Vault Breaker will just bring him back to the team. So it's another four minutes until he can make a play like that again. So without blue buff, oh, nice play. Oh, he's found Vardags. Oh my lord, the damage will be pushing him out. Dan goes in onto the wall. Zayu throws out the bowler, will force out the flash. And he has popped his ultimate. Can he get in range? No. But he will get in range of Hyla Sang with the ultimate coming through the shockwave as well. Sweeps him up with the last auto attack and Q. Wow. That's a dead fresh. Yeah, and to be honest, I don't think that uh, Hyla Sang was expecting that. It's a very weird position to kind of get killed in. Oh, Makla's been called out though by Dan. Does not choose to go all the way. Vardax was there, but he's still on critical HP. Didn't go all the way back to base. 11 and 8. That was a very weird uh, place to go in for that flank. Indeed. So, the point I was going to make is without blue buff, Power of Evil is kind of getting punished for not having mana. Cassiopeia, if you don't really charge up those stacks, is pretty difficult to, to hold a consistent mana pool on. There we go. Dragon has fallen in favor of reason. And now, what I was al going to allude to is the fact that uh, what you used to see on Cassiopeia was the Tear of the Goddess route. Yeah. Because you use so many abilities so frequently, you can stack a tier fairly quickly. And I'm a little surprised that Power of Evil is going full on damage, full penetration, and spell vamp, which is not something we see very often, instead of extra mana. Because typically, when you go towards Seraph's Embrace, you end up a lot stronger in the late game, which I feel would have benefited Unicorns of Love maybe that little bit more. But Power of Evil is the Cassiopeia player. I'm just regurgitating what we've seen <laughs> a while ago. Well, I totally agree with you. In this game, Unicorns of Love, their best kind of way to come back into this game, looks like they may just want to stall to late game. And mm. especially when they have such good wave clear, you've got the Tristana with the explosive shot, uh, passive, you've got Power of Evil with just the general wave clear from Miasma and uh, the Q's coming out, then they could theoretically stall. So maybe they do want to shoot for late game, but Power of Evil also has not picked up a single big item. He's just gone for the components of all his big items. Yeah. That's so he's not hit a spike. So the the Wisp, I'm guessing, was to try and get him into lane that little bit quicker, just to, uh, you, know, you know, that faux pas that he had of uh, whiffing the ult in the bottom lane. You saw it nearly work in the top lane as well, but the flash from Lulu got her away. So as you said, no big items. That means when, uh, when Power of Evil actually builds those items, it's going to catch Reason off guard with how much damage uh, that Cassiopeia is actually going to do. So I feel like Leandris is a, a decent item because of just how much stacking damage you're going to put, but here's the engage. Could be bad. Power of Evil, the ultimate comes onto him from Rengar. Dukes out of the way of the petrifying gaze. Now take fun for the wall. Will be quickly followed. The highlight sign now moving out to limit. Great knock back onto Maclu as he dashes forward with his cube. But there's the piercing light. Drags him in rain. There's another relentless pursuit. Picks up the double kill for himself. Jokies now jumps onto Flaxis. Gets the hell picks. And also the Glitterlands to keep him in place. Four for one. Goes to Reason Gaming. And they will make a serious dent in the base of Unicorns. It feels like a repeat of game number one here. Because it's around the 20 minute mark. And Reason Gaming are just going to take an inhibitor tower here. Probably going to get the inhibitor off it as well. All they lost was Libic in that engage, and it was a good initial juke out by Zayu, followed up by a black shield, which meant that even when he was in the stun section of the ultimate, there was no actual crowd control that came down onto Zayu, and it's something that Power of Evil has actually struggled with a lot in this game, and that is landing the ultimate, and it's a massive part of their team fight. Exactly, and... Wow, Twin Shadows. That's what that was going for. Okay, interesting. So it will, I guess, help him uh, keep people at bay, but it doesn't really help him get away from the Rengar who's been mauling his face every single time he gets into a team fight. Um, but even if he chooses to go for someone else, then you've got the Orianna with the Balls of Lithery system, you've got a Wild Griff on top of that, you've got a Black Shield on top of that as well. It's just a Wombo combo. Oh. And onto Hyla Sign should be able to melt him. Dan now in a bad situation. Zayu, can he get in range for that bowler? He will jump after him with that with that bus jump. And now the following up with the rest. Oh! 
Stops the Vault Breaker with the Sonic Wave, keeps him in place, two picks, and Reason Gaming have full run of the board. Yeah, and I, I kind of feel like Baron would be a, a good option for them here. They just got the smite down, but a second inhibitor, if they can get it, would be uh, another alternative. Doesn't actually, they're not going to be able to get a mid inhibitor, so that's a little bit. Not, well, I, I don't know. It's one of those things. Getting more turrets is always good, but there was definitely a window to get a Baron. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, It was a choice. Then they yeah. just decided to go into the mid lane. Bardag should be able to clear this away. And the wave is gone. I have maybe one idea of why Twin Shadows. So when Rengar pops his ultimate, if you see it from far enough away, hitting Twin Shadows oh, okay. uh, will yeah. reveal and slow him. But I don't... I mean, Rengar's only going to hit his ultimate when he's close enough to you to get on you. And if that happens, you not gonna get saved by Twin Shadows. Yeah, like Power of Evil would have to basically uh, read when he's popped his ultimate, yeah. which is difficult, especially uh, as they don't really have that much vision currently, it's all around their base. Uh, if he is able to do that, however, that could be amazing because everyone can back off. It, it also allows him to hit the Q more easily. It's it's another way of, of getting a slowdown to make sure he gets the poison. So it's not just for Rengar, that's kind of like a side utility. I have a feeling that that's... Oh. I hear a Rengar and Hyla Sang will surely be dropping again, continuously being picked off. He is always the first casualty, always the first man to die. Blackdish in the top lane, getting just chumped by Makla. Now Zayu coming in from the side. Living Ward land the Dark Binding. Wall also land the Soul Shackles. CC after CC. Pick after pick. And Reason Gaming just take apart and dismantle Unicorns of Love. Yeah, that's really the only word for it right now. It is dismantling of the Unicorns. And I mean, it's just not gone so well. Again, they started out well. They yeah. got kills on Takara Vibble, but Reason Gaming, their focus has been so good. In goes Dan. This is the last fight. Dan comes in, Assault and Battery, and he will just drop like a fly. Vardax jumps out. Hyla Sign Q comes forwards, does not land onto anyone. They've lost their jungler, they've lost their engage, and all of their front line is non existent. Vardax trying his damnedest to clear oh. the minions. Goodbye. The ball says, You're dead. And Unicorns <laughs> <laughs> of Love, Zayu. This is just brutal. Double kill for the mid laner. And this is the second game. And the 2 and 0, oh, surely for Reason Gaming. Unicorns of Love are now out of the turn, out of the challenger invitational here from Face It. 22 to 9. A dominating performance from Reason Gaming. And they will be progressing onto the grand finals. And I don't want to say that this was the entire reason, but you can see how difficult Cassiopeia is. I mean, Power of Evil is a competent Cassiopeia play. We saw it against Ninjas in Pajamas, but you go up against a team composition that can lock you down like that, and you get punished for it. There is so little opportunity to get your damage out if you get killed at the beginning of every fight. That's what Zayu did. Every single fight. If if it was Hyla Sang in, out in the open, that's who he took. But pretty much 100% of the time, he was jumping on Power of Evil again and again and again. And the worst thing was Unicorns of Love in uh, in Champion Select. The Cassiopeia was the last pick. Yep. So they saw the full composition. They saw what it could do. They saw the Rengar and the Wombo combo of all the ultimates on top of that and still decided to go with the Cassiopeia. I guess it was like a last-ditch uh, last well, effort from them. but That's one of those things when you go through a composition is, in theory, it should be... You know, in theory, it's going to do well in lane. And it did well in lane. Yeah. But it's when Power of Evil started to roam, started meeting Zayu in the jungle, started getting into the fights. It was just a case of Zayu's pick of Rengar was so good at punishing an immobile champion. And that's why we don't see so many immobile champions right now, unless you have a protect comp, which they didn't. Yeah, and that ultimately led to a 2-0 and zero sweep for the team of Reason Gaming, who will be progressing onto the Grand Finals. And up next will be the next semi-finals, including Gamers 2 and Ninjas in Pajamas 2. Uh, two teams with many accolades underneath their belts, and I'm very excited to see how this one turns out. And they'll be facing Reason Gaming later on today. Yeah, indeed. They locked their place in the Grand Finals here, but I am looking forward to this one. It should be a cracking series. 
Yes, it should, Gromit. But anyway, <laughs> we'll be <laughs> heading off the screen and we will be seeing you very soon. So don't go anywhere.